All right, let's turn to weather now. We've all been waiting for this day, the peak night to watch the Perseid meteor shower. Thomas Patrick joining me now in studio. So Thomas, okay, so we know all about how it's going to happen from today until uh, the end of the week, but what does that meteor shower actually mean? So it's the entire like world can actually see the yeah, meteor shower, absolutely. Right? And, and Regina, I have to say, I'm glad you're so interested in this. I think <laughs> it's ever since you saw that fireball a couple months that, ago, right? That really did change my entire outlook because I've never seen that. I was driving home from work and saw yeah. this huge entire uh, the night sky light yeah. up and I was so freaked <laughs> out. <laughs> so it was great. Yeah, that a meteor and those fireballs and meteors are sometimes random and kind of one off events, but a meteor shower is predictable. In fact, Earth's orbit is going through this area that has a little bit of rock and ice and debris from a comet known as Swift Tuttle, and that happens every August. So we get this meteor shower. It's called the Perseid meteor shower because it looks like the comet or the uh, meteors are coming out of the constellation Perseus and near Cassiopeia. Tonight is the peak and should be great viewing across most locations through midnight, with the exception of the cloud cover that we're seeing right now. But we'll have fine viewing for a couple of days to come. So tomorrow night, Thursday night should be just great, and the meteors that you see out there are all from the same event. It's not a one night event, so even though we got some cloud cover this evening. It's not all for loss and there it is on Doppler radar. Really unfortunate that this came through right when we're getting the peak viewing hours for the meteor shower. But yeah, that cold front that sweep through the area really left this deck of high cloud cover 22,000 feet in the air, but it is an overcast cloud cover. If it were during the day, this would be filtered sunshine. The sun would definitely shine through this, but at night those pinpoint stars and even those meteors that fly across the sky not going to have a chance to get through that kind of cloud cover. Let's try again for tomorrow night. Here's the wind future tracker for tonight and into tomorrow. Winds diminishing to about 10 to 15 miles per hour. Same story for Thursday as well. So not as windy of a day as it was today. And thus our fire danger does go down. It's usually a little bit higher when we have high winds and it has been very dry. It will stay fairly dry for the days to come with our dew points in the 30s. Today though was closer to this arid category, especially in central Washington. I noted some relative humidities as low as 8%, especially near the lower Coyote Creek fire. Our temperature trend for the next week looks like it's a huge upward trend, but really first things first, we had a cold front move through the area, so our temperatures down into the 70s for highs for Wednesday and Thursday, and even some lows will be in the 40s. After that, then we ridge back out for the jet stream, and that gets us closer to 100 degrees come next week, especially on Monday. So as you'll see on the seven day, it is almost a 50 degree temperature difference from some of the lows this week to the highs next week. Uh, yeah, it is going to be warmer than average. Still mid 80s is the average. So if we're looking at 15 degrees above average, that puts us close to 100 degrees. And by the way, we did have that 100 degree day a couple Fridays ago, so we'll feel much like that, especially Sunday, Monday and part of next week. But look at the low temperatures, especially Thursday morning. 48 is where we bottom out and 99 is where we top out next Monday. So that is a difference of about 51 degrees in just five days time.